What issues are at the top of your agenda for this year's annual meeting, especially in your capacity as co-chair? I think the priority this year is very much how do we ensure that we achieve a really sustainable recovery in the world economy. We've averted the worst of what might have happened in the crisis, but how do we ensure that growth returns, that we get onto a trajectory for the world economy that creates wealth, mitigates poverty right across the world? What does the theme for the meeting, improve the state of the world, rethink, redesign, rebuild, mean for your organisation and for your industry? Well, the phrase rethink, redesign, rebuild couldn't apply to any industry more than to banking, which has obviously been through a hugely traumatic period. I think the challenge for the banking industry is to work out how much needs to change and what to prioritise. We clearly do need to change a lot, but there's a risk of trying to do too much too fast and in doing so, creating unintended consequences. For Standard Chartered, which has weathered the crisis well, actually this process of flux, this change in the industry, is really more of an opportunity than a challenge. What is your outlook for the global economy in 2010? I think the global economy will have a better year in 2010 than in 2009. We have averted the worst of the crisis. However, I don't think we should be at all complacent. There is still deleveraging to be worked through, particularly in the West. That's never an easy process. And there will be shocks. There will be volatility. And I think the big question is how strong the recovery will be, how self-reliant and resilient it will be once governments and policymakers begin to pull back on the various forms of fiscal and monetary stimulus that have been put in place. What is your reaction to the banking reforms that are on the table? What do you think should form the core of future regulations of the industry? There's no doubt that banking needs to be better regulated than it was before the crisis. Policymakers have moved very quickly from crisis management mode into the mode of thinking through what these changes need to be, and that's absolutely right. I think the risk, though, is that we try and do too much too fast and therefore that we get unintended consequences in terms of the interaction of different initiatives and also that we're unable to do this in a globally coordinated fashion. There's a real trade-off here to be taken between the safety of the banking system in terms of how many protections we build in against the risk of future crisis and on the other hand the efficiency and effectiveness of the banking system in terms of supporting the real economy. Having more capital, more liquidity, not a bad thing. In fact, we do need more capital and liquidity than before the crisis. But there is a cost to it, and that ultimately is borne by the real economy. And we have to be careful in calibrating the levels of capital and liquidity so that we don't undermine the banking system's ability to support the recovery. Cross-border capital flows fell 82% in 2008 and severely disrupted the availability of capital for investment worldwide. How can businesses finance capital investment in an era of global deleveraging? The deleveraging process across the globe is to some extent inevitable and necessary. Particularly in the West, there were excesses of leverage. That has to be unwound and this is never an easy or painless process. The process will undoubtedly continue through 2010. There will undoubtedly be more bumps and problems as a result. But it is vital to ensure that international capital markets continue to function, continue to support the real economy, global trade and investment. And that's why we have to be very careful as the regulatory architecture changes that we don't fragment international capital markets. And finally, in what ways are you engaged with the World Economic Forum? And what value do you think this partnership brings, particularly in fulfilling the mission to improve the state of the world? Standard Chartered is a strategic partner of the World Economic Forum. And we are proud, I'm proud, to be a co-chair of this year's annual meeting. I think the World Economic Forum plays a unique role, a very special role, in bringing together different types of actors, companies, governments, NGOs, bringing them together to debate and devise ways of tackling the many challenges that the world faces. For example, at Standard Chartered, we've used the World Economic Forum as a place at which we can work together with other companies, and governments and NGOs on issues as diverse as the challenge of eradicating malaria 
and also of financing SMEs in developing markets.